Just for fun. No, well, yes. Um, in my case, it was probably for fun, but no. But we were taking with the, with when we were mapping Germany. Right. Then we had cameras in the wings, under the wings, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'd be set, and they'd just press a button, and they'd just roll on for 30 minutes, or however long it was, right? Yeah. And then uh, they, they had like 500 feet. Of film. Of uh, film. So that must have been pretty exciting, flying in a DC-3 with the door open? Tremendous. And then uh, did you, um, I was going to ask you about that. So, the, oh, what was your rank, by the way? My rank uh, was... Um, well, I was pilot and navigator bomb aimer. I got dropped out to be the bomb aimer, right? Uh, or the, um, uh, the, the navigator, I'm sorry, the navigator. Yeah. And so I, I trained up in that. That was pretty good. The navigator basically maps the course yeah. and goes to the briefing and uh, gets the routes uh, that so we're you, to follow. You don't remember what your actual rank was, Colonel? My, uh, no, no. General? No, no, no. <laughs> my, my rank was lieutenant. Lieutenant. Yeah. But it was, how did they say it in Britain? A lieutenant. Yeah, a lieutenant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. And so then, uh, did you make a lot of friends when you were in the uh, RAF? Yeah, I made a ton of friends. Yeah. Really good. Did you keep in touch with any of them after the war? I think for the longest time I did, yes. It's hard to keep in touch, though, isn't it? Yeah, because they're, they're from everywhere. American? Did you meet some Americans? Uh, yeah, I met many Americans. Ultimately, I went to the United States. So, uh, how long were you in the RAF for then? Uh, th uh, three years. Three years, and then uh, you said, now you lost some hearing when you were flying. Tell me about that. Well, I think that foolishly, I, lo I lost my hearing because I, they, they give you plugs to put in your ear, but you know, it's, it's human nature to take the plug out so you can listen to it. But then ultimately, you, you, I blew an eardrum. That's what happened. And, uh, but I had, it was easy to repair, so. How did you blow an eardrum? Uh, just a, 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 well, a, a sudden, sudden when we dived, there's a, a you know, you're, there's a huge buildup in your uh, in your ear, yeah. right? And that's where I blew the drum. And now that's and that was repaired. Hmm. How do they repair an eardrum? Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a surgeon or a doctor, so I, I don't know. But it, it's like a, it's like a, a plastic. It's about the size of your finger now. Mine seems dirty right now, but like that. And they put it in your ear. Yeah. Covers your ears. It's, it's a simple operation. So did you get an honorable discharge from the RAF? Yeah, I did, yes. Or were you only in for three years? Well, that was enough, wasn't it? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> it wasn't like a course that you signed up for three no, years. No, 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 no. It was, that was a compulsory. You had to do three years. So at the end of three, you, they asked you if you wanted to stay? Yeah. And you said, no, I want to I, I want said to goodbye, yeah. Okay. And then what did you do after the RAF? Demobbed, and demobbed. I then went and started... What do you call it? Demob, demobilized. Yeah. And having, having Did they give you a suit? Pardon? Did they give you a suit? Yeah, yeah. they give you um, they they give you money for to buy a suit. Because I remembered seeing that in some old books that they when the uh, soldiers got out they all got suits. Yeah, you went to the thirty shilling tailor. Huh. And and they give you thirty shillings. And uh, they gave you I think they gave you something like two pounds or three pounds something like that. It was pretty generous. To buy clothing. Yeah, I mean three pounds. Then might be, uh, you know, it might be a hundred dollars or so now. Did you buy a nice suit? Yeah, it was pretty good. And a hat? Uh, well, there's a, no, I never liked hats, so I never bought a hat. You never wore a fedora, eh? No, no. Oh, I, I wore the, yeah, I wore the, the Kangol, the, uh, the, the, um, the, 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 the beret. beret. Oh, the beret? Yeah. The one that went out on the front? Yeah, the I've had server? many, many of those caps, yes. Is that like there's the beret that hangs on the side? Yeah, that's correct. You like that one? Yeah. Uh, didn't you get a new hat for your birthday last year? I thought it would look like a Kangol hat. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. From a friend. That was no. I thought Dottie and uh, Uli gave it to you. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I, I gave you something else. I gave you earmuffs. All oh, right, right, right. They're good. Hat. They yeah. are good. Yeah. So uh, you got out of the RAF. Then what did you do? Uh, then I got. Uh, you I decided don't... to go to. Did you go back into the news business? I went in, I, I immediately got back into, yeah, I got into the news business. Uh, you must have taken... Then I moved, I moved to the United States. That was the next biggest thing. Okay, before we get to that, let me just finish up with the... Uh, you must have taken a lot of pictures when you were in the RAF. I did, yeah. What do you, where are all those photographs? I still have them. They're at home. They're, they're just piles of photographs. Piles and I'd piles. love to see them. Hundreds of them, yeah. So you have all kinds of photographs. Negatives, you keep your negatives? 
Yeah, I, some of them I've got negative. Uh, not all of them, but I, I have negatives too. Hmm. And the other thing, I've got, a, I've got, a, I've got a, a tape recorder that's about the size of a shoebox. Right. And about that thick. Remember, you've got to hold it up to show the camera. Yeah, it's about the size of a shoebox, this right. tape recorder. And, and about how thick? It's, it's, I, I, like that? Yeah, it was, it's about that, as big as, as deep as that, as long as that. And, uh, and, uh, on, and when you lift open the flap, there's all the, the, uh, the, the, the effects you can make, print, I mean dial, and I did different things you can so do. So you must have a bunch of audio cassettes then somewhere too. Yes, I do, yeah. So you always like technology, it sounds like. I always like using technology. Technology, you know, bores me silly. I don't know much about it. Yeah, but I know what you mean in terms of how things work you like. Yeah, yeah. And then, so then you got out of the RAF and then you decided to come to the States. Yeah, that's right. What was, what was it that this made you decide to go to America? Well, you know, there was, we, didn't, we didn't travel by plane in those days. We, we, we went by ship. Right. Uh, I think the price. It was, uh, Canada was inviting people. Like, first I came to Canada. Right. Canada was inviting uh, was, uh, wanted people. It was, an, it, it was and remains an empty, it is an empty country. Right. Largely empty by the standards of Europe. And they, um, they, 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 they pretty much paid for your, 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 cat, your passage. So that was a free ride. I got to, Mont I, I got to, um, I got to the very tip of Halifax, maybe? Halifax, one, no, Newfoundland? even Newfoundland? Newfoundland, uh, just off Newfoundland, the next stop up. Uh, St. John's, there's, uh, not Prince Edward, I don't Saint know. St. John's, St. John's. Yeah. That's where I got off. And then I came, um, I came to Montreal. Uh, when, I, when I got to Montreal, that's when I just was walking down the street, just walking around the city. It's a very beautiful city with this mountain and all that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I saw uh, a television station, the antenna and everything on top. Mm -hmm. So it was, but I saw it at night when I was walking at night. So the next day I went, I went and said, you know, we're starting television in, in September in Canada. And uh, I, uh, with your, your background, your skills, your writing abilities, uh, we'd love to have you join us. Hmm. So I had, I had an interview with a man called um, Fergus Mutry. He was the, um, I said, you know what, I, I come from a background of, uh, you know, odds and ends, really. He says, I come from a background of odds and ends. He said, I'm, I'm a person who was, was in the world of finance, mm -hmm. so what am I doing running this television station? Mm -hmm. uh, so he said, we'd love to have you if, you'd, if you would, um, but we're not going on the air till, uh, till September. And uh, so, so there I was again, nothing to do, just walk around, take pictures, uh, enjoy myself, I had a bit of money. And then I got, uh, then I got the job. The, at the very first of the, um, days of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation as a, as, um, a, as a television. Mm. So it was fantastic. So let me get this straight. So you, um, you were, first of all, you delivered the newspaper. Right. Then you were a copy boy. Correct. And then you worked your way up as a reporter. Someone gave you a chance to be a reporter. Right. Then, uh, this is all in Manchester. Right. Were you writing when you were going to Manchester University? Or yeah. Or did you quit that job and then go to university? Because you must have been a fairly young reporter. Yeah. I, well, I quit that job. I, 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 there was somebody on the, on the paper, uh, I, th I think his name was Arnold Cohen. He said, you really should get your degree. It's going to make, make a difference. I okay. said, I don't really want to, you know. He said, he said, Believe me, you should. So I did. Okay, so then you quit and went to Manchester. Right. Started the physics, right. hated it, yeah. switched over to photography. Right. Then you graduated from there. And then, or when did you start selling your pictures to the newspapers? During your, your time when you were a university student? Yeah, yeah. I, I was always selling. Always. Shooting and selling, yeah. And then you go down to university and then you decided to go to, because I don't quite understand. When did you go into the RAF? Before or after university? Oh, before. So you it was with the it was with with my service record 
but I got a very good deal at, at the university. Okay, because what I don't understand is, okay, so you're, um, just something to do with the timing, I'm just trying to figure that out. So you're 14 as a copy boy. Right. Then maybe you're doing that for two years, then you're a writer for a couple of years, then you get out, because you said you're about 17 when you got into the RAF? Yeah, 16 and three quarters. So he said you should do something else, you should you get your degree, but you decided to go into the Air Force first? Right. So then you left, got into the Air Force, right. did three years there, then you got into Manchester that's University. That's correct. Is right. that right? Yes, that's right. Then you went to Cambridge. Right. And then you decided to... Um, well, Cambridge was fantastic. So I, I, I just loved it. And I thought, um, uh, I just loved it. I loved the academic life and uh, the, um, you know, the visits to London, the trips to London, all, you know, all made me mature in different ways. Yeah. So you were a rower, weren't you? Didn't you row for a while? I was. Rowing was my was my sport. I, I wrote I rode in skulls. Skull? What? How many? Eights? Yeah, eight. Yeah, eights. And uh, who'd you row for? Um, I can't really remember now. Manchester. Where it, was, was it? it was a club. It was a rowing club. It was part of the university. Yes. But Manchester or yeah. Cambridge? Manchester. And tell me about the Cousins Soap Factory. About the Cousins Soap. Oh, Cousin Soap. Do you remember you used to row in the morning and wasn't there a factory oh, up the that, river? That's right. It threw, it was the most stinky, stinky, they, they threw the residue from the, the soap making. I mean, obviously, you know, it, this couldn't happen today. Down, it, they just put it into the river. So by, I was there, I was rowing, and when I came across, I was covered, well, the, the water was, was filled with soap floating around, uh, it was just a dreadful mess, you know, just incredible. And sometimes you'd fall into it, or were they? Well, you could it? fall. Like, you wouldn't want to fall into it. It's pretty gross. Yeah, it? yeah. And so did I've had my falls in the, in a boat, and um, fortunately, I've been able to walk out hmm. because I'm not a good swimmer. And then, uh, so to this day, you don't like cousin soap, is that right? No, no. I, I don't have, actually have nothing against it. I don't. I don't think you can buy it in Canada. Uh, no, I don't think you can either. Do you remember, I don't know if you remember a number of years ago, remember our, our scouts when we were at Savile House? Yeah. I don't remember what their names were. There was two women, Hillary and uh, there was another woman that were our scouts. And they, uh, I was always complaining about the small soaps in our room. Do you remember how Right, right, yeah, yeah. And then one day they gave me a big bar of cousin soap. And you saw it and you told me the story about the smell. And then the next day, for a joke, they put cousin soap in your room. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah. So then you moved from, uh, <clears throat> as you, so you had enough, not really had enough, but you decided you tried your fortunes overseas. Right. Uh, not overseas. I mean, and, and, and I went to, um, yeah, not overseas, but I moved to New York. From, okay. from but through Canada first? Yeah, yes, from Canada. Okay, be before we get there. What about leaving uh, Britain? What was that like? Did your mom cry when you left? Mums always cry when you leave. You but remember? they're happy when you come in with gifts. It's true. Yeah. Do you remember the day you left Britain? Yes, I do remember. Well, who, was off, who was there to see you off? Nobody sees you off. You the, just went on your own? Mum didn't come down? No, no. I was saying, and, and you have to report to Aldershot. That's Aldershot for training. That's a military you? base. Okay, well now I'm talking about when you left Britain. Oh, see, so you, oh, you're talking about Germany. So the first time you left, you went to Germany. Yes, yeah, so after my training, yeah, I was yeah, yeah. I was sent to Germany. I went by boat. I told you we're, we're repeating that there. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I went to Hamburg. From by boat. Yeah. Ah, oh, I see. And you, nobody saw you off then. No. And, but then you never went and lived home again, did you? Like you would visit Manchester, but you never after the war ended. So uh, then you went to Manchester University and to Cambridge, right. but when you left Britain f to go to Canada, you got on a boat. Right. Whereabouts? Southampton? Uh, uh, no, um, Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah. Did mom see you off? The family saw me off, all crying. It was terrible. I bet it was. <laughs> yeah. Because that was the day, because at least when you're going to, to, to Britain or, or to Germany, you'd be coming back. Right. But now you're leaving forever. That's right. Who, who was in your family? Mom and what was your dad's name? Arthur. Mom? Uh, uh, Lillian. Lillian Smith. What was her yeah. maiden name? Penega. Rhymes with vinegar. <laughs> How many brothers and sisters? I had I have I had uh, one brother. What was his name? Godfrey. 
Godfrey Desmond? Yeah. Or Desmond Godfrey? No, Godfrey Desmond. And then your sister? It's Joan. Joan. And what's your full name? Are you Eric? Er Desmond? Eric Desmond Stash Smith. But everybody loves the Desmond name. That's right. Because your brother uses that as well. Right. Was that a, when did he start using it? I don't know. I can't speak for him. How about you? Were you Desmond your whole life? Or you yeah, Eric? all my life. So from the time you were a kid, you were Desmond? As far as I was concerned. Right. We never used the Eric. Okay. So there, was a, there used to be a, there used to be a, a, a saying, a, a fun saying. Eric, this is a book, I'm sorry, a book called Eric or Little by Little. Eric, little by little. Or little by little. Oh. It's a nice title, isn't it? It, it, it makes you want to turn the page. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, the family came. Your brother Desmond came. And yeah. your sister Joan and mom yeah. and dad. Yeah. And uh, that must have been an awful day, eh? Getting on that boat. Was it hard to leave? Not for me. It was great. Yeah. Off you I, I was going to have a new future. A new adventure. Plus I had it. It was... Um, a subsidized ship ride because Canada wanted you to come. So you went to